We're here at the Gramercy Theater in New York City. I'm here with Andreas from Sepultura. Welcome to New York, man. How are you? Thank you, man. Good. All good. All good. Has been the tour. I mean, the tour is coming to an end tonight. Yes. So, don't you tell us about the progression of this tour with Chris Yoon, Death Angel, and Havoc? It was great, man. Um, actually, we were touring for our new album that came out like last July. We came to America a year ago without the new album. It was a great tour and all, uh, North America, States, and Canada. And now we're back with that Angel, Christian, and Havoc. Three great brands, you know, like that Angel, like historical band, a lot of, uh, you know, experience and good friends. Christian from Brazil, you know, it's great to have a Brazilian band with us outside Brazil. It's the first time, you know, we actually wow. have that. And Havoc, uh, a band from Colorado, very powerful, you know, very trashy and stuff. So it's been good. I mean, the album uh, received a lot of very positive um, reaction and and uh, criticism in a very good way, you know. Uh, we we did three weeks of touring in Russia before coming here, you know, so it was like the Cold War tour <laughs> from Russia, from Siberia to California, you know, so uh, <laughs> but it was great. I mean, um, we have to spend a lot of more time in the States, you know, we, before last year, we, we took like uh, almost, I don't know, eight to, to eight years without coming to the States, you know, and um, and now we have a proper label, you know, Nuclear Blast is doing a, a great job, a new album. I think this is a, a really a good uh, new start for Sepultura here, you know. So um, we're doing also the festival in uh, June, uh, Orion uh, Fest, and the Metallica Fest, mm -hmm. June 24th, which would be great for us here in the States. And we try to come back here still uh, till this year, and um, maybe with a different package, of course, like a, maybe a bigger band or something, you know, let's see. Let's see uh, about the possibilities and stuff, but uh, hopefully we'll spend more time here in the States and to push Sepultura back. Right, you were obviously talking about Kairos. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the production process of Kairos and what do you think set that apart from all your previous albums, which are a lot of albums? Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, the, the main thing that is, that is, it's an album that talks about Sepultura. You know, it, it's, uh, you know, we did the Dante Alighieri book, we did the, the Clockwork uh, Orange book, and this time it's it's almost like we, if we have like our own biography book in our hands and we talk about ourselves, you know, about our musical ideas, all the challenges we had coming to, from Brazil, um, all the music that we listened to these years and stuff, and it was, was fun, you know, it was great to talk about us. We have lyrics to our families, you know, to fans, to press, to record labels, managers, and traveling and touring and stuff. So uh, musically, we have a little bit of everything we did. A lot of the old trash too, feeling, you know, more of direct uh, stuff and etc. So um, it's a very raw, very alive album. You know, Sepultura always like to go to the studio and, and bring the, the alive uh, feeling, you know, almost like we are on stage recording, you know. So. Uh, uh, very happy to work with Roy Z as a producer who, who brought a lot of new ideas and ways of recording things and he, he bought the whole you know package you know the the team and the project and the the, the you know the, all the concept and everything and he's an amazing producer an amazing guitar player so all around it's a very powerful album that um, you know it's it's doing a lot of good for us you know keeping the band alive and and uh, it talks about ourselves today. You know, Kairos is a, uh, a concept of time that uh, is not a chronological time, you know. It's just a moment, special moment. Mm -hmm. And we are living this special moment. And you said it before, obviously being from Brazil, and you talked about the challenges that you guys faced. Why don't you elaborate a little bit on that? Tell us what were, especially when you started out when there was no internet, there was no way to really kind yeah. of get the word out from one day to another. What were the biggest challenges that Sepultura faced back in the day? I mean, all the challenges possible. <laughs> you know, we, it was very hard to, to find the albums, very very hard to find any video or anything, you know. Um, but the, we, we, we created a lot of fantasies in our heads, you know. We never had the chance to see the bands live, but uh, we believe on the albums, you know. <laughs> the albums were all perfect, you know, like very well recorded regardless of the, the quality of recording, you know, they, they were there, you know, like distortion and power and stuff. And uh, and I know a lot of bands didn't sound that like on stage, you know, it was all like kind of studio tricks and shit mm -hmm. like that. But uh, for us, was everything was perfect, you know. So we, we tried to, to, to build Sepultura in that 
that way, you know, oh, we have to play perfect, we have to, to try to do that, and, and it was good stuff for us, you know, because um, it was very difficult to, to have good equipment in Brazil, good amplifiers or musical instruments, and uh, people who understand metal to record metal, you know, people just record like fucking country music and whatever, mm -hmm. and when you go to distortion to the studio, they, you know, they thought the studio was on fire or something, so, <laughs> <laughs> so every, every kind of challenge that we, we faced, we, we grew up out of it, you know, um, and I mean, schizophrenia was like that, you know, especially, you know, to try to reproduce that, and, and we made the best uh, that we could, and, and it's still today is a very special album, you know, not only the, the, the recording, but uh, the way we, we presented with double, you know, album with the picture, with the lyrics and stuff, we were very concerned about the whole package, you know, with the logo and everything, you know, so, uh, I think that th it's cool when you have challenges like that because you, you get better, you know, that's the only way. Or either you stop or you go ahead, you know. So uh, I think uh, I've seen a very positive way. Of course, during those days it was very difficult and we hated the situation. But looking back, you know, that's what made Sepultura special, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and ready to face any challenge in anywhere in the world, you know. And when was the moment that you guys kind of sat in a room and said, what a gig, or here we are, and this is like what we wanted to do, and we're kind of ready to get to the next level, you know what I mean? Like, especially, as you said, coming from Brazil, facing all those challenges, what was the moment or the gig that you guys were, okay, here we go? I don't know, that's very hard. I mean, um, I think the very special moment was when we signed with Roadrunner, you know, in 1988, after schizophrenia, Max went to the States with a friend uh, to, to spend two days. He came here to New York. Uh, to give like demos and, and the, the albums because afraid of for different people and Road, Ro Roadrunner bought the, the challenge to have a Brazilian band <laughs> in their roster and uh, I think that was the, the, the most special moment because uh, from there you know we had the chance to to record with people who knew heavy metal or trash metal whatever metal we did you know it's like we had the chance to, to record with Scott Burns from Florida the, the cradle of fucking, you know, death and Morbid Angel and Obituary and stuff and, and Morris Sound Studios, you know, so I think that was the big moment that say, fuck man, I think something's really happening, you know. <laughs>